Team Foundation server, but Team Foundation server is just oh. gargantuan in yeah. what it can accomplish. Yeah. Project management is just at the beginning, right? I mean, that's just the beginning of what it can, and code, don't forget it could do source control, right? <laughs> so you get this whole list and source control shows up at the end, but that's the core bread that's, and that'll butter. That'll be the key, the key fe feature for most folks is that you can just save all your code up in the cloud. So, you know, those things when your machine crashes and you lose all your work. Yeah. Yeah, you can use T T Visual Studio Online for free, and you know that's um, in most cases. Well, you know, one of the great things of Visual Studio Online too is the ability to use it as your um, as your build service as well. Yep. So it already has all of your source code. It knows when people are checking in. Why not have it so it pulls all your source code in, evaluates it, runs all your unit tests for you, builds it all, checks it, puts it into a drop location, maybe even deploys a website for you. I mean, you can do whatever you want in build service. And why have a dedicated build server when Visual Studio Online is just sitting there working for you anyway? So there's a, that's another big feature that um, really sells Visual Studio to developers who are really into CI or continuous integration. That's important for them. And then we just inter introduced application analytics, um, which is our telemetry solution as part of Visual Studio Online now. And so it's just becoming a bigger and bigger family of tools that supplement your, your on-premises Visual Studio. <laughs> yep. Or your local Visual Studio. All right, so I'm a developer, and I am a Microsoft developer. The tools that are available to me are, well, first, there's this idea of documentation. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, so, you know, sometimes documentation is just you getting your hands dirty, Andy. Yep. But where would you go if you were looking for API references? Yep, it's msdn.microsoft.com. So, yeah, yeah, that's where it all is. That's where everything is. And uh, it's always getting reworked, too. Yep. And it's funny, it doesn't look anything like the MSDN that I learned. That I mean, when I was doing ASP, not .NET, right, it's just ASP, it was still MSDN back then. And it was... It was an invaluable resource to me. Of course, back then I even had books. Ah, Most of them were yeah. Red Rocks books, too. It's funny. Um, anyway, another place you could go, especially if you're doing Windows development, is dev.windows.com. There's a lot of design guidance there as well as, to, as uh, developer guidance there as well. But then there's training options. So maybe wherever you are, even, no matter where you are around the world, more than likely there's a live or a near live, which would be like a live webcast, right? Um, sort of training event meant for you. And you can go to msevents.microsoft.com and look for those. And there's probably more than you ever dreamed. And uh, that's probably a missed resource to a lot of developers. And then there's this idea of MVA. Have you ever heard of MVA, Andy? Uh, I think I have. <laughs> I think we both have heard of MVA, yes. Yeah. So and Microsoft Virtual Academy. So there's just masses of really great learning content on MVA. Uh, you can learn stuff and you, you use it in a structured way. So you can uh, this uh, you can gain points for your activities and yeah. interact with other users. And and the MVA is a great resource where you can find all these these online training resources. The last thing you might hear of is the MSDN subscription. And so the MSDN subscription is simply um, it's a paid subscription that's annual, and uh, there's several different layers or tiers to it. Some are inexpensive and some aren't. <laughs> and uh, they, that's where you can go and download our operating systems. You have keys that you can install and develop against. I really wish I could install Windows 7. Just go get it. I want, I want Windows 7 Professional. Just go get it. I want any Windows 8. Go get it. And it's all there for you to download. Office is there. All of our server products are there. Everything but Xbox games are there. Yep. And uh, a lot of developers have it and don't know it. They, uh, they're, they're, your company, perhaps, has already purchased a series of MSDN licenses to make sure that your Visual Studio installation is a, a legal license. And so you already have an MSDN license or subscription that is already named to you. It's named to a developer. And um, with that, you get so many benefits, far more than just software and keys. You also get Office 365 credits. You get Azure credits as well. Every month they reset, so you get all these credits. It's pretty ex exhaustive. If you are a... MSDN, is it universal? Is that the super one? Super, you, yeah. I think it's universal. Yeah. That's $150. That's $150 a month in Azure credits. How many pounds is it? Do you know? <laughs> That'll be about 100. Yeah. Yeah, about 100. Yeah. The, uh, all right. So uh, that is, if you're a Visual Studio user, that, I, mean, I mean, if you're a Microsoft developer, those are your bread and butter, right? Those yeah. are the core pieces. And uh, so let's... Let's go through, and I want to kind of take away a little bit of the what might make you timid when you're uh, setting up your environment to do Microsoft development. So let's just go through the installation of Visual Studio and how that would work. 
So I'll just start with a blank browser here, and I'll go directly to visualstudio.com. It's an easy place to start. You don't have to have an MSDN subscription. Um, you can download the Community Edition. But in this case, we're going to download Visual Studio 2015 Preview. Now, because it's Preview, there's only one edition available. That's the Ultimate Edition. So you can be careful. Don't spoil yourself. Yeah, yeah. The, um, so I, it, you didn't see that, but I logged in real quickly there, and now I get to pick between Ultimate 2013 or Ultimate 2015. I'm going to go ahead and take 2015, and uh, you can see at the bottom it's prompting me to download. I'll just go ahead and run it. Now this is a web installer, and the web installer oh, set up a block. So I already have Visual Studio installed, so I, this is why I'm getting this screen. Oh, but if I was looking forward to the one and a half hours of sitting watching it installed. <laughs> well, I think yeah. that's worth saying. So this, what would happen is I would get a full list of checkboxes of yeah. all the things that come with Visual Studio, all the emulators, it's office in, development. It's insane, the, the list of features in that product. Is you can insane. say, check yeah. all. Right and install everything, yeah, yeah. or you can pick and choose exactly. You what better you have want. 20 gigs of disk space available to get all that <laughs> stuff down. It's like it's pretty it's serious. Huge, yeah, it's, yeah. The, and I every think kind of we might as well be honest. It takes a while to install Visual yeah. Studio, so if you it, you would be smart to click go and then go go to lunch. <laughs> yes, right? You yes. would be smart because yes. I mean don't think it's just going to be as fast as installing Notepad because there's nothing no. nothing fast about it. All right. Anyway, that's just the installation. I do have a screenshot here that kind of shows the checklist and it, it it keeps going as well. What's not in my checklist here is the Windows 10 Preview SDK. And so that is coming along and probably by the time our audience is watching this video. They'll already have the Windows 10 Preview SDK. Um, but where do you get different pieces? Well, the first thing you need is Windows 10 Preview. So let's assume that you don't have an MSDN subscription. You can go to insider.windows.com, yep. and Andy, you can download it right there. That's right. So yeah, this is what we're talking about. This develop this Windows 10 Preview is for these Windows insiders. So you you are the you know the smart people who have signed up to try yeah. out Windows 10 and give us feedback. And uh, this is the the SDK accompanies the, those preview releases. How of. much does it cost to be a Windows Insider? It, uh, you, uh, nothing. 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 Uh, free like all. water, free like air. Yes, indeed. Remember when uh, it was Bill Gates who said that about Internet Explorer? It's going to be free like water and free like air. <laughs> free like Pellegrino. All right. So, and then Visual Studio 2015. You want to uh, install that as well? Just go to VisualStudio.com. Like I tried to. You can go to Visual Studio Download, but you'll have a more successful installation unless you already have it installed as well then there's no need for you to get it anyway. And uh, again, the, the, Windows, the Windows 10 Preview SDK will ship with that, and so you'll just have it as a checkbox that shows up there. Now, you will need a Microsoft account because you'll need a Microsoft account for Windows. Yep. You'll need a Microsoft account. Visual Studio will prompt you for a Microsoft account. You could say no. You can use a local account in Windows, and you can just say no to Visual Studio, and you won't get the benefit of roaming. You won't be able to use Visual Studio Online, because that will also require a Microsoft account, um, but you could say no, until you get a Microsoft developer license. So what's a Windows developer license, Andy? Yeah, so, well, the first time you launch Visual Studio and try and deploy uh, a Windows 10 app to, yeah. to your, maybe just to your PC, yeah, then it will prompt you to say, oh, you know, you need to have a developer license. So these are free downloadable, just licensed to use. It's kind of just so that we, we kind of know who's using it, and yep. uh, it just allows you to deploy it. They, they, every time it's coming up for a renewal, you just get prompted, and you go online, and uh, you can download a, a refresh for that license. And you're basically logging in with your Microsoft account. So if yep. all the way through you've said, no, 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 you're going to have to have a Microsoft yeah. account when you get your Windows developer right. license. And, and also, if you, yeah, and if you want to unlock a phone uh, for actually deploying your apps, uh, side-loading your apps during development onto a real mobile device, Again, you'll need a, develop, uh, a Microsoft account to unlock that phone. If you no want to charge deploy for that. to the store, you're going to need Indeed. a Microsoft yeah. account. Yeah. Yeah. Really, the Microsoft account, it's that one account that sort of does everything yeah. in the Microsoft universe. And then the other good thing, like you mentioned it there about roaming settings, so I mean, people need to understand the power of that. So if you've got multiple devices, you know, you've got a tablet and a phone, maybe a couple of phones and a laptop, you know, and uh, you're, you've got the same app running on each of those. Uh, if uh, if you uh, you do something one app, you change some settings and preferences. You you don't want to have to go and do the same change on all your other devices. You want those settings to roam through the cloud and automatically turn up uh, on in the same app running on those other devices. And all that magic is enabled by the cloud. And the key to it is having your Microsoft account. Yeah, it's the Microsoft accounts. With it gives you Office.com. Yeah. It gives you Outlook.com. It gives you OneDrive. Every yeah. service Microsoft has. Yeah. Um, 
one word of warning, warning, one word of awareness. Let's do it that way. Hyper-V, uh, it's a hardware requirement on different devices, whether or not you support Hyper-V. Most new devices do, but some don't. And uh, you will, it'll also make a change inside Windows to enable Hyper-V and perhaps change uh, the, the admin group for Hyper-V as well. Yeah. A Visual Studio will do all that for you. You won't even know it happened unless it fails. And uh, then you're going to want to check it out. Why is Hyper-V part of the story? Yeah, because the phone emulators are VMs. They're virtual machines. Uh, they are running the true Windows 10 operating system themselves, but they need to run in a virtual machine, and that technology to enable that is Hyper-V. So let's review. Uh, so we spoke about all the things that developers need to have. We talked about Visual Studio and how it's basically the one thing you need, other than Windows, of course. And uh, Visual Studio Online is you know, not the browser-based Visual Studio, but it's the online supplement to Visual Studio with all of the services that help developers' lives just get better. And then we talked about MSDN, and where you can, you, a subscription to MSDN is where uh, you can download all of our software and things like that. And then the Microsoft account, that one unified account across everything. Makes sense to you? It does. All right. Well, that's all we're talking about here. This is hopefully getting you comfortable and familiar. Go install Visual Studio 2015 Preview and watch some more modules. Welcome to a Developer's Guide for Windows 10 Preview. I'm Jerry Nixon, Developer Evangelist from the United States, and I'm here with Andy. Andy, where are you from? United Kingdom. Ah, brilliant. Yeah. Wherever you're from, you're here with us today because we're talking about Windows 10 Preview. So we have a lot of things to cover, yeah. but we want to go through just Hello World, the simplest of all, so we can kind of see how you can just get started and take advantage of the SDK that you have today. Yeah. Brilliant. All right, so specifically, I want to talk about the universal app platform. Then we'll go through kind of how, this, how your solution is structured, how your UI and interface gets structured, and then actually build a quick hello world together. Makes sense. The, the journey to get to where we are, Andy, has been a, an exciting one. Yeah, it has. I mean, we've been on this road for a long time, getting our, our different device families converged to where we are today. You know, you go back to uh, Windows Phone 7.5, Xbox 360, we kind of had convergence around Internet Explorer. You get to Windows Phone 8, Windows 8 and Xbox One, and at that release, we got a deep integration down at the operating system level. So right down at the drivers, it was the same kernel. Moving on to Windows 8.1, this for developers where stuff, stuff really gets interesting because there we had the converged app model. So with Windows 8.1, you can build universal apps using the same WinRT API set. Um, but you and, still... and all the way up to there, yeah. uh, we were always building apps for those specific targets. Yeah. Even when we saw the converged app model, you were still building multiple binaries for multiple devices. That's correct, yeah. But the difference now with Windows 10, we've now got this uh, the common platform where uh, we are creating one binary that's going to run across all of these different device families. We have finally made it. We have. It's <laughs> the way to look at it. All right. So let's talk about the universal app platform. This is what part of what enables it. Of course, we also know there's the, the Windows Core and all of these things. But how does UAP actually play into it? UAP is the universal app platform. It's a collection of contracts and versions. And it, every time you have uh, Windows 10 installed, you can go on your own to the Windows SDK folder and see just what UAP versions are, are enabled on your, on your, on your um, Device, yeah, your on desktop, your, on your version. Your, your device, yeah. And you, you, over time, you'll find there'll be new versions we'll install side by side. So UAP is this platform that um, will be revved independently of the underlying operating system. Even with Windows 8, uh, we were enabled to build Windows applications with WinMDs that were there provided by the, the Windows operating system. Now we still have those WinMDs, but they're in these folders, and they get mixed together in different ways. And so here we can see Platform XAML actually identifies 10.0.9910. Of course, this is Windows 10 Preview, so who knows what it'll end up being. But that version of UAP includes these four contracts, which if we were to drill in further, you would see really in includes these four WinMD files. Yeah. So these, these, um, these contracts are just collection of APIs, but fundamentally, you just need to think of the UAP as a universal, a converged API surface mm -hmm. that you develop against, which 
weirdly enough, is what you already know, because it's actually the same, it's a superset of the same APIs. If you've been building for Windows 8.1, it's the same APIs. It should be very comfortable for you, that's right. right. And, and I think the takeaway here is now we no longer target Windows. It used to be you would target Windows 8.0, 8.1 came out. Now we need to retarget to Windows 8.1. That, as, as now we're seeing Windows as a service, and we're going to see upgrades to Windows more frequently, how, fr how frequently developers need to retarget their applications. That's not even an issue anymore with UAP. So with UAP, we target the platform, not the operating system. So I have UAP, and I have this guaranteed set of WinMDs. They're going to be on and on and on. No matter what version of Windows I have, those WinMDs and those versions will be guaranteed to me as an app developer. So I target UAP. And here's how I do it. This is the syntax you would see in the app manifest. And if you're a, an Android developer, this is a familiar uh, scenario for you. The min version probably represents the, um, the version of UAP that you write this for in the first place. And so let's say we wrote it for two. Of course, we had only even have one released yet, so this is all fictional. Yeah. But let's say you wrote it for two, but then uh, version three, then 3.5 comes out, and you test and you know that the workflow inside your application works just fine. And so you go ahead and say, you can run this anywhere between two and 3.5. And so this is how we target that. It's inside our application, and it's beautiful. 